Hey Pokemon trainers! Welcome to or welcome back to the channel. Today we've got another Pokemon Sword and Shield tutorial video for you. And today it's going to cover all of the special evolutions in the DLC expansion for the Isle of Armor. Alright, so let's get going! Now quickly, before we get started, thanks so much for being here. If this is your first time on the channel and you enjoy Pokemon content, make sure to consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you find this video helpful or entertaining in any way to you, make sure to give it a thumbs up and or leave a comment down in the comment section. Now this video is a long one and I wanna orient you to it just a little bit. If you are here looking for information on how to evolve one specific Pokemon from the Isle of Armor, make sure to use the chapter links that are down in the description or at the scroll bar right underneath the video. I've ordered the different Pokemon evolutions in the video by their number in the Isle of Armor Pokedex. So definitely click through, enjoy the video, good luck completing that Isle of Armor Pokedex if you haven't already. Next up, if you want to evolve your Cantonian Slowpoke into Cantonian Slow King, you're also going to need a King's Rock. Now, in this game, unless you bring it in from another source, the only place to find Cantonian Slowpoke is going to be on the Isle of Armor from the Diglett trainer. So if you are not familiar with the Diglett trainer, they are just right out here, right at the forefront of the Isle of Armor. Right here, this character makes you hunt down Diglets across the island. You have to look for their little hairs sticking out of the ground. The goal is to collect 150 of these and return them to the trainer. However, there are stages in between where if you return a certain amount, he will give you different Pokemon. And the first Pokemon that he will give you in exchange for 10 returned Diglets is Cantonian Slowpoke. So once you found 10 Diglets, just make sure to go visit this guy right here in front of this first dojo there, and you will get your Cantonian Slowpoke. Of course, you can always trade Slowpoke in from another game, but that's not as fun. So then once you have a King's Rock, all you need to do is give it to your Cantonian Slowpoke and then trade with a friend, have them trade it back. You will have your Cantonian Slow King. So make sure that when you're doing trades involving a King's Rock that you get that King's Rock back. Give it to the person you're trading with, make sure it's a friend in this case, and have that return to you with the King's Rock so that you can use it again on Cantonian Slowpoke. All right, next up, the most important one, probably the most complicated Pokemon Evolve on the Isle of Armor, is evolving Slowpoke to a Slow King. As you can see, I have not even done this yet. So I'm glad you all get to be here with me while I finally register my Slow King to my Pokedex. Also don't have a Slow Bro, but we're gonna do Slow King today because that's the complicated one. So now, if you don't already have a Slow Poke, I'm guessing you do, they're so easy to find. They are all over the place on this beach down here. Very, very easy to find. They're harder to avoid than they are to find. So first up, what you're going to need to evolve Slow Poke to Slow King are Galerica Twigs. Now, these are items that can be found on any of the different sparkles on the ground. So just keep picking up those sparkles and eventually you will get enough Galerica Twigs for this evolve. You do need 15 of these in order to make this evolve work. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get this Slow Poke here. I actually don't know if I have this version of Slow Poke yet in my party, so we'll just capture it quickly. Woo, critical catch again. So we've got our beautiful Galarian Slowpoke. We're gonna add that to our party. Next up, even though we are talking about Isle of Armor evolutions, to complete this Slowpoke evolution to Slow King, you will now need to head over to the Crown Tundra to find the woman who is going to present you with the item that you need to do your evolution. We're gonna call a flying taxi to three point pass. This is a good place to start, easy to get to via taxi. And you're just gonna wanna go around the corner here until we get to the frigid sea. And from here, we are just going to, oops, not run into an Avalog. So you'll want to just keep heading to the left here and then you're gonna wanna head down this water path here. Watch out for Avalogs. Come right up here. Enter here. Oh look, Dazzling Gleam, a bonus when you're doing this for the first time. All right, so here is who we need to talk to. Right here, just to the back of that cave we just entered. The Wreath of Twigs is what we found. So, of course, you wanna give her the 15 Galerica Twigs. A brand new wreath. There we go, we've got our Galerica wreath. A wreath made from woven together Galerica twigs, placing it on the head 
of a Galarian Slowpoke makes the Pokemon very happy. All right, so what we want to do now is go into our bag. All right, Galarica Wreath. So we are going to use this item on our Slowpoke, and there we go. It is evolving. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, just make sure that when you do this item, you're not actually giving it to Slowpoke to hold it. You are using the item on it. That can be a little tricky on this one because it seems like the type of evolution where it needs to be holding it to evolve, but you actually have to give it to it the same way you would a stone. And there we go. Our Slowpoke evolved into a Slowking, and that's a new Pokedex entry for me and hopefully soon for you as well. Look at that thing. It's crazy looking. What are those eyes? Is that a third eye? Next up, we're going to do Happiny. So now this one is in item evolution and a time of day evolution. So if you don't already have Happiny, it's everywhere. You can find it all over the place. I believe it's completely underworld. Don't quote me on that, but you do have to kind of run around in the grass to uh, find one. All right, so we've got Happiny there in our party now. Now for this one, you're gonna wanna give your Happiny an oval stone. Luckily we have one. So now if you need an oval stone, they do come with Happiny. So when you're hunting for your Happiny on the Isle of Armor, you have a 50% chance of that Happiny coming with an oval stone. So in my case, I pulled my Happiny out of my bag. It didn't have an oval stone. Luckily we had one in our bag as well. But this step should be pretty easy if you are looking to evolve Happiny with its oval stone. Just find one until it's holding one and there you go. Now again, it's worth mentioning that Chansey is also very easy to find on the Isle of Armor, so you don't necessarily need to spend time evolving Happiny to get that Pokédex entry. But if you love doing evolves! And finally, the last step is that you need to evolve your Happiny during daylight, so luckily it's daylight right now. Now again, all we have to do is just get that to level up once, and ours is level 20, so that should be super easy. We can probably just give this one medium experience candy. Let's see. There we go. There we have it. Our Happiny is now evolving to a Chansey. Yay! Now we're going to do Jigglypuff up to Wigglytuff. This is another easy one. If you don't already have a Jigglypuff, they're also quite easy to find. They hang around on the shorelines in grassy areas. So here you go. Here are two habitats on all weather. Okay, so we're out here in the fields of honor. As you can see, there's Jigglypuffs. We'll just go ahead and catch a new one. Another critical catch. It's like they know. They know we just want to evolve all the critical catches. And now for the easy part, we just need a stone. And it's a moonstone. Moonstone, over to Jigglypuff. And now we get our little Wigglytuff. Stone evolution, so easy. All right, now we're gonna talk about how to evolve Kadabra to Alakazam. This one is super, super easy. It, it just requires a trade with a friend. It doesn't need to be holding an item like some of the other Pokemon. So essentially where you wanna start is by finding Abra. Abra is relatively easy to find on the Isle of Armor. It's just gonna be down here. So the easiest way to get to the Fields of Honor is just by using the flying taxi to get right down there. And let's see if we can find an Abra. There's one right there. So there you go, they are very easy to find. They do spawn in all weather, so just make sure to go down to that area. You should find one easy peasy. And then, even easier, Abra evolves into Kadabra at level 16. And as you can see here, if you have already beaten the game and maxed out the level Pokemon that could be in the wild, you're likely going to find this Abra at level 60. So all you have to do is get it to level up once and it will evolve. And then once you have the Kadabra, do your trade and you'll have Alakazam. Next up, we are going to do the Lickitung into Licky Licky Evolve. This is another extra special evolution because in order to evolve Lickitung, it needs to know the move Rollout. So first of all, Licky Licky is also available in the wild in the Isle of Armor. It's a little bit more rare, but they can be found wandering around if you look for a little bit. So it isn't necessary to get that Pokédex next entry with an evolve, but if you do want to do the evolve, the easiest way to do it is to go to the Isle of Armor and try to find a higher level Lickitung. As you can see, we have one right here. We're going to go ahead and put this in our party. And just in case you are curious where to find Lickitung, here you go in the Isle of Armor. We've got all weather here and all weather there. That is usually where I see the Lickitungs the most often. 
So once you have your Lickitung, and again, if you've beat the game, it's most likely going to be level 60 from the Isle of Armor. You're just gonna wanna zoom over again to a Pokestop, head over to our Move Tutor, remember a move, and pick your Lickitung. And you're going to want to have it remember the move roll out. Now, as you can see, this is a move it learns pretty early on, so it's, it's not the greatest move. So make sure to be careful with what move you will replace. So we're gonna remove Screech because that move is worthless. And now that Lickitung knows that move, we are gonna just use a single rare candy on it to get it to level up. And now it will evolve into Licky Licky. All right, there we go. Another Evolve crossed off of our list. Another Pokedex entry for me. Next up, we are going to evolve a Tangela into a Tang Growth. So this is going to be a special, very special evolution. To evolve a Tangela to a Tang Growth, it evolves when it knows the move Ancient Power. So there are a couple ways you can get Ancient Power. One is simply by leveling it up. It will learn Ancient Power at level 24. So as you can see, the one we currently have is at level 13. However, let's go see if the ones on the Isle of Armor will actually be at a higher level so that we can either learn this more quickly or we can visit one of the move tutors in the Pokemon centers to teach it ancient power as a possibly forgotten move. In this little forest here, I forget what it's called. This is where you're gonna find Tangela. You can also find Tangrowth in here in the wild on occasion. So chances are you're not technically going to need to do this evolve to get a Tangrowth, but if you find a shiny version of Tangela or a really powerful Tangela and you wanna evolve it, this is how we're gonna do it. Now, as you probably know, the forest of focus is quite a maze. There we go. All right, there's some Tangela here. So let's go ahead and see if we can catch one that's higher than level 13. All right, we've got a level 60 Tangela now. Go into our Pokemon party and we're just gonna check this Tangela to see if it does have ancient power. All right, so it does not have ancient power, which means what we're going to wanna do now is head to a Poke Center. All right, so we're just gonna go to Hullberry. First place my arrow went to on the map. And now we wanna go to talk to this person over here. We're gonna to go to remember a move, pull up one of our Tangela's here. And now, here we go. So our ancient power is in the memory there. So we're gonna choose ancient power and let's get rid of tackle. Our Tangela now has ancient power, which you know we just need to have it level up one time. So we're gonna quickly go into our bag and we're gonna give it a rare candy. There we go, we've leveled it up. Tangela is now evolving. There we go, Tangrowth. Next up, let's do Staryu. So Staryu into Starmie is an other easy one and they're super easy to find. If you just go out to any of these beaches over here on the Isle of Armor, you're always going to find a Staryu there. So super easy to find, super easy to evolve. Let's get to it. All right, here's a Staryu right here. Let's just go ahead and catch it. We'll put it in our party and we'll quickly evolve it. And guess what? Right back into our bag. And all you need is a water stone. So there we go. Staryu has been given a water stone and it's evolving. Now, of course, Starmie is quite easy to find on the Isle of Armor as well. It's probably much quicker to just find Starmie out on the beach. Super easy to find, but that's how you evolve it. Next up, we are going to do the Magnemite all the way to Magnazone Evolve. So if you don't have a Magnemite already, also super easy to find, very readily available down here in this grassy patch. I'm sure you've all seen it. Now, if my memory serves me correctly, our Magnemites should be in this patch of grass here. So there they are. Critical catch. And now that we have our Magnemite, this Magnemite does evolve into Magneton at level 30. So as you can see, ours is ready to evolve. Pretty much if you catch this in the Isle of Armor, it's likely going to be level 60. So all you need to do to evolve it is simply battle with it or give it just a little bit of XL candy so that it levels up and can evolve. So what we're going to do to get this to evolve is we're going to give it some XL candy. Also, you can use a rare candy, which would save the trouble. There we go. Which means it's now going to evolve. And now that we have Magneton, all we need is a Thunderstone. And now we will have a beautiful Magnazone. Now again, Magnazone can also be found in the wild in the Isle of Armor, so you don't necessarily need to evolve. But that is how you do it.
Next up, we're going to do Fomantis. This is another easy one. I'm going to go ahead and get Fomantis over here into my party so we can do this evolve. Now, if you need a Fomantis, this can be found pretty readily on the Isle of Armor. So as you can see, there are quite a few places to find Fomantis in the game, and you're going to want to look out for harsh sunlight as that weather. We've actually got some right there. So currently, we can catch a Fomantis right there. So let's go ahead and pop over there and see if we can find one. All right, so this is typically where I find Fomantis in here. There's one right there. There we go, easy peasy to find. Once you have your Fomantis, it is going to evolve at level 34 during the day. So we've got our Fomantis up to level 33. We're gonna give it its one rare candy so that it can reach level 34 and evolve. <laughs> Such a cute Pokemon. Next up on our list, we're going to talk about how to evolve Scyther to Scissor. So Scyther is going to be another trade-based evolution, and you're going to need a special item for this one. And that special item is going to be Metal Coat. For this, all you have to do is give the Metal Coat to a Scyther, and then as you know, trade it to a friend, it will evolve, and then have that friend trade it back to you. Now, if you have yet to have a metal coat, you can find it in the game in the main area. You are going to want to navigate to Stoneside. Once you get there, you're going to want to go over here to the left. If you haven't already found this location, it is just right back here. You'll see some beautiful diglets there. And look at that waterfall back there. I don't think I actually ever noticed that. Now you're going to want to go up these stairs and then up these stairs and that metal coat will be in a pokeball right here as you can see i've already collected it so it's not there for me but that is where you can find it this is the only guaranteed place to find it in the game however much like finding a king's rock through halocha you can also encounter bronzer or bronzong and there will be a five percent chance that these pokemon will come with a metal coat now, another place that you can get another metal coat, several metal coats to be exact, is from the Digging Duo, which is going to be here in Bridgefield, as you probably know. Digging Duo is just right here to the left, so you just have to pay 500 watts, and then they'll start digging for you. All right, now we're going to do Poliwog all the way to Poliwrath. Now, as you can see, I don't even have a Poliwhirl yet, nor do I have a Poliwrath. And in case you need a Poliwog on the Isle of Armor, let's check the habitat. Poliwog in all weather types. Just over here, can't remember the name of it, but that is okay. So I went ahead and I added my Poliwog at level 13 to my party. And now to get a Poliwhirl, all we need to do is get this to level 25. Now my guess is that there are also Poliwhirls hanging around about the Isle of Armor, but for the sake of this video, let's just go ahead and start from scratch with our Poliwog. Now, of course, you can take this Pokemon out and battle it like crazy for the XP, or you can just go into your bag and use some of your stones. All right, so we have a fair amount of experience candy, so we're just gonna go with that. Seven XL candy, will that do it? Well, it's level 60 now. <laughs> that happened quite fast. So for those of you who are using experience stones to level up your Poliwog, there you go, you don't need seven. And here we go, our little Poliwog is evolving. Now again, you only need to get it to level 25 for this evolution, so we're gonna have a pretty strong Pokemon here. New Pokedex entry for us. And now here is the nice and easy part. So to evolve Poliwag to Poliwrath, all you need is a water stone. Now, of course, these can be found all over the game. My favorite spot to find these stones is in that secret little lagoon. Once you get that water bike that can ride on the water in the wild area, that, that little secret lagoon that's all the way back to the left of the wild area. There's always stones around that Stonehenge area. So now we just use this water stone on our Poliwhirl and we're gonna have a nice strong Poliwrath. Easy peasy. And there we go, Poliwrath. Now, if you want to get your Poliwhirl to a Politoad, this is going to require a trade. While we're here, we'll catch a new Poliwog so that we can evolve it to its other form, the ever loyal Quick Ball. We're gonna go ahead and add this to our party and now because this Poliwog is already level 60, all we need to do is just get it to level up. 
and they should evolve now. There we go. All right, and now that we have our new polywhirl, we're going to want to give it a king's rock. There's our king's rock. We will give that to polywhirl. And now what you want to do is trade it with a friend. So find a friend, of course, that you can trade with, and then they will return you the Pokemon right back, and it will be a poly toad. So now the important thing to note here is that players are only going to be able to get one King's Rock from within the game. Guaranteed King's Rock, that is. So if you go into your bag and you find you don't have a King's Rock, it means you probably missed it where it is located in the game. And that location is going to be over here in Route Eight. So if you're able to call a flying taxi and fly over here to Route 8, chances are you probably already have this King's Rock. But if you missed it by any chance, it's just right at the end. So just head on down the stairs, look out for the phalanx, oops, and that item is just going to be right in here. So as you can see, obviously I already have collected that item. Now, if for any reason that item has already been collected by you and you do not have a King's Rock, I don't know where it went, but you can also find additional King's Rocks by battling Haluchas. Now, typically Haluchas can be found in the wild area right up here at the top. Just go ahead to the very top of the wild area. And then typically the Haluchas are down here in this little rocky area. There we go. There's one right here. So essentially you have a 5% chance of getting this Halucha holding one of these King's Rocks. Let's see if we can do it on this one. Why not? So I'm gonna try to quick ball this. Let's see what happens. Can we get a critical catch? Critical catch? <laughs> Guaranteed critical catches. Send to a box. Okay, so it looks like this Halucha didn't have a king's rock but if you do need one you're gonna have to do a little bit of grinding and wait for that thing to respawn and just keep going after it all right next up we're gonna do the adorable rock rough as you may or may not know rock rough has two different evolves depending on the time of day that you do the evolve and those two forms are its midday evolve and its midnight evolve so just as their names suggest you will get the midday form if you evolve rock rough during the day and this evolve's going to happen at level 25. And then of course, for the midnight version, you'll have to evolve Rockruff at night at level 25. So it is currently daytime here. So we're gonna go ahead and evolve the midday form. Now, first up, if you do not yet have a Rockruff, they are pretty easy to find on the Isle of Armor. They're going to be up in that kind of switchback type area leading up to one of these dojos here, that dojo. So we're actually gonna head on over there and see if we can't get a second rock off so that eventually we can do both of the evolves. I think I just have the one right now. So we are going to fly to the training lowlands, the fastest route for us currently. And we're gonna head up these stairs and see if we can find ourselves a rock rough. Oh, well, there's a lichen rock right there. All right, so we found a rock rough just out of the grass out here. Toss a quick ball at it. Rock Ruff at level 60, so you know what comes next. Get a rare candy for Rock Ruff. And now we will see that evolve into the midday form of Lycan Rock. And finally for Rock Ruff, there's also a more rare third type of evolve. And that's going to be the Dusk form of Lycan Rock. Now to get the Dusk form of Lycan Rock, you're going to need to find a Rock Ruff that has own tempo. So own tempo is going to be a special ability that Rockruff is going to have. So to check that, you're just gonna to wanna to go into the Pokemon summary to the second page over and just look down there where it says ability. And as you can see, the ability that this Lycanroc has is Sandrush. So own tempo rock roughs are, I don't think found in the wild at all. If they are, it's so rare that I don't think anyone really knows. So now your best chance of getting a own tempo rock rough is going to be in raid dens. So in raid dens, you can find both own tempo rock roughs and dusk form lichen rocks. So make sure to keep your eyes out for any raids. Of course, you can always use a wishing piece, toss that into some raid dens and see what it produces. And always keep your eye on the YCOM to look out for any rock rough or lichen rock raids. So if you are out hunting for rock roughs in max raid dens, once you catch it, make sure to check the summary and see if the ability says own tempo. 
Now let's talk about how to evolve Seedra into Kingdra. This is going to be another trade evolution and this Pokemon needs to be holding a dragon scale. There is a dragon scale available in the Isle of Armor. If you haven't got it yet, let's quickly go over where it is. It is going to be in a little island, which is like right out here in the Honeycomb Sea. You'll want to travel to the Training Lowlands. That'll be the easiest location to start from. And you're just gonna wanna cruise down this way, out to the water. And that item is going to be right out here on this tiny little island. The first one you'll see slightly to the left. And I've already collected this item, but it will be in a Pokeball right in the center. So now if you do not have either of these Pokemon, Horsey or Seedra, you're gonna wanna go and hunt for Horsey. It can be found in the wild on the Isle of Armor. So now this one is just like slightly, slightly harder to find than the normal Pokemon. It is going to be out here in this little corner and it is going to be a in the water overworld spawn. So you're gonna need to ride your bike out there, swim around a little bit until you see that cute little head pop up. And then once you've collected your horsey, it will evolve into Seedra at level 32. So then from there, of course, you're gonna wanna put Seedra over into your party, head on into your bag, navigate to the other items tab and get out your dragon scale. Give it to Seedra to hold and then find a friend to trade that Pokemon with and have them trade it right back to you. And make sure to hang on to that dragon skill in case you ever need to evolve a Seedra to a Kingdra again. All right, now we are going to do Petalil. If you don't have a Petalil, it can be found over here on these, uh, I think this is Honeycomb Island. Now this one's a little bit harder to find. It isn't all weather though. So now, as you can see, Lilligant is also quite easy to find on the Isle of Armor. So finding a Petalil and evolving it is actually a lot more work than just grabbing the Lilligant, one of the most common Pokemon on this game. All right, to save time, we're just gonna pull the Petalil that we already have and do the evolve on that. There they they are. Let's move that over and place Wiggly Tough. And now back to our bag. And for Petalil, you need a Sunstone. So there we go. And now we will get a beautiful Lil again. Again, a lot more work than just catching one in the wild. And now we'll do Execute to Executor. If you don't already have an Execute, these are the two best places to find them. So over here in the Stepping Stone C as well as up here in the Insular Sea. And they're usually hopping around in the grass in these little islands. So might as well just fly over here while we're here. So we'll just head out to this island so we can confirm that the executes are out here. All right, so we're out on this island and as you can see, there's an execute and we're going to just try to quick ball it here. So again, if you don't already have one, here's where to get it. Now let's go ahead and evolve this thing. So this is another easy peasy one, all we need to evolve execute into executor is a leaf stone. And again, you can find those all over the place. If you are in the Isle of Armor, chances are you probably have a ton of every stone available. And there we go, evolution time. Cheers. All right, and next up we are going to talk about probably the most complicated and hardest to get evolution Pokemon, and that's going to be Porygon. So you can't actually get Porygon in the Isle of Armor until you beat the main storyline, including beating Master Mustard and his entire team. Now, once you have a Porygon, I did a little bit of kind of cheating here because I haven't actually finished the storyline in the Isle of Armor, and I went ahead and transferred a Porygon over from Pokemon Go, which if you don't know how to do that, that, there will be a link down in the description to another video I made showing you how to transfer a Pokemon from Pokemon Go into Pokemon Sword and Shield, which is a new feature that was released in late 2020. So once you have your Porygon, there's a number of different ways that you can get your Porygon to evolve to Porygon 2 and then to Porygon Z. Now, both of these evolves are going to require a special item and a trade. So let's move Porygon over. Even though I'm not gonna be able to trade for this video, let's pretend like we are going through through these motions to get our Porygon evolved. So for anyone who's ever played any Pokemon games, you know that Porygon's going to need an upgrade to make that first evolve. So there is an upgrade available on the Isle of Armor and that upgrade is located in the Training Lowlands. So let's go ahead and fly to the Training Lowlands. So we are going to go this way back here past the grass and this area right here is going to be where you'll find your upgrade. So since I've already collected it, it's not here, but it will be in a Pokeball, I believe like right around this area here. Let's not get attacked by this lily pup. 
So once you have that upgrade, you're going to want to give it to your Porygon, trade with a friend, and of course, make sure it's a friend who's willing to give you that Porygon right back. So the Porygon is going to evolve when it moves over to the friend you trade with, and then once it comes back to you, you will officially have your Porygon 2. Now, once you have a Porygon 2, you're going to need to find another item to get it to evolve to a Porygon Z. And for this one, you're going to need an item called a Dubious Disc. So the dubious disc is going to be found in the workout sea. If you haven't already found it, it's super close to the giant whale lord that's first out there. So let's just go ahead and fly over to the fields of honor and we'll show you where that dubious disc can be found. Normally, the whale lord would be straight ahead of us there. So if you haven't already caught the whale lord, this is where you will see it just straight ahead. So since we don't have our whale lord, what you're going to want to do is first you can head straight to this island which has the raid den on it. That's a good middle ground to make sure that you're on the right path. And the item you're looking for will be on that next island which is straight back. So this is the little island that you're going to find that dubious disc on. And like the other items, it will be in a Pokeball right here. And just like the previous Evolve, once you have this dubious disc, you're going to give it to your Porygon 2. You're going to trade it. Once it gets over to a friend, it will automatically evolve. And then you just want to have that friend return the Porygon back to you. And you will have your Porygon Z. All right, next up, we're going to talk about three Pokemon from the Isle of Armor that require a high friendship level in order to evolve. So the first one is going to be Chansey. So we know that you can get Chansey either by finding it in the wild or evolving it from Happiny. So this is one of the easier Pokemon to find from this high friendship level evolution trio. So once you have your chance, you just go ahead and put it into your party. And the next Pokemon that's going to require high friendship is Meryl. So once you have an Azurul, it's going to need high friendship to evolve into Meryl. And then at level 18, it will evolve into its final form, Azumarill. So I actually don't have an Azurill. So let's go ahead and go hunt for one. So where you're going to find this Azurill is going to be here in Brawler's Cave. There's a 5% of it spawning in the overworld. So you'll be able to see it, but of course it's going to be a low spawn rate. So it might take a little bit of work on your end. Now the easiest way to get there of course is to fly to the training lowlands and now we're going to want to get to brawler's cave all right so here we are at brawler's cave now let's see if we can find an azurel we found one here they are it only took us about maybe three minutes of roaming around so i'm going to go ahead and quick ball this and hope for the best this will be a new pokedex entry for us critical catch as always we're on fire with the critical catches for this video since as you can see we already have a mural we're going to do a little bit of a side step in here we're going to go ahead and add azuril to our party and pretend like meryl doesn't exist now we have Chansey, Azurel. Now, the final Pokemon that requires high friendship to evolve, and this is kind of a strange one because it's Iggly-Buff. So Iggly-Buff is quite hard to find in the Isle of Armoric. It is available in the wild, but it's probably a lot easier to just breed a Jigglypuff, which of course, if you have a Jigglypuff to breed an Iggly-Buff, you don't need to evolve your Iggly-Buff into a Jigglypuff. So this is kind of a strange one. If, if there are completionists out there who want to make sure that they have actually done all the evolutions, maybe this is for you. And again, I actually do not have an Iggly-Buff. I have not bred any Jigglypuffs, nor have I found an Igglybuff. However, they can be found pretty much in the same areas that you're gonna see Jigglypuffs in the overworld. So as you may know, this is going to be in the Fields of Honor area. So let's go ahead and fly over there and see if we can't catch ourselves an Igglybuff. So of course, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is try to find an area where you see Jigglypuffs. There we go, that was easy. And uh, hopefully we don't run into any other Pokemon. Let's see if we can get an Igglybuff. Another Veneri. I ran around in this patch for about 10 to 15 minutes here and we didn't encounter an Iggly buff. We're going to pretend like we have an Iggly buff in our party. Let's pretend that this Pikachu is an Iggly buff. So my advice here is if you actually do want to use the high friendship evolutions for these three different Pokemon, which again, you don't have to because these can be found in different means. They are by no means tied to this specific evolution only. So now to increase friendship with your Pokemon, there are a number of different ways that you can do this. The first one is if you do encounter these Pokemon like Azurel, like I just did, or if you do encounter an Igglybuff, make sure to use either a luxury ball or a friend ball on that Pokemon because that will increase the friendship greatly as opposed to catching it with any other type of ball. Additionally, you can give any of these Pokemon a Soothe Bell, which one they are holding that and you have them in your party, it's going to 
to increase the friendship a little bit quicker. And then of course, the easiest way to just increase friendship with a Pokemon without having to think about it or try is to just keep them in your party, walk around with them, have them in your party when you're battling, and of course, camp with them, make them curry. And then eventually, once they hit a high level of friendship, they will evolve. Now, make sure you don't do anything that's going to decrease the friendship with your Pokemon, which includes having them be fainted in battle or giving them any bitter items. And of course, if you just have them stored, that's going to negatively affect your friendship with the Pokemon. Now, while these will evolve automatically when they reach a high level of friendship, of course, you can always go to the friendship checker to see where the individual Pokemon are at as far as friendship level goes. Now, if you don't already know where the friendship checker is located, that is going to be in Hammerlock. So you can just go ahead, call a flying taxi to Hammerlock. And then once you arrive, you're going to want to head this way, right into this house. And you're going to see this cute little boy right here, who apparently is an expert on Pokemon friendship levels. So let's just go ahead and see where our, our Azurel is going to be really low, obviously, because we just caught it. So it likes me an average amount. Now, based on what this little boy tells you, you'll be able to determine what level of friendship you have with your specific Pokemon that you're having them check. Now, finally, it has been said, even though this friendship is a hidden stat, there are numerical charts for this. So it has been said that Pokemon that require a high level of friendship will evolve when it hits 220 friendship points. Now that specific number is going to be when this child tells you, you two get along great. Now again, it's a little bit over the top to continuously go check this because this can be reached pretty quickly if you just keep your Pokemon in your party and use them regularly, camp with them, feed them, earn hearts with them, etc. So there you have it. If you want the three most complicated and unnecessary evolutions in the Isle of Armor, it will be those three Pokemon. Oh, hey, wow, you're still here? It's been like an hour. Shout out to any of you that made it all the way to the credits and are now here for my outro. If you did make it this far, type the word cheeseburger in a comment down below. That's right, cheeseburger, type it down there. It's my favorite food. But for real, as always, thank you so much for watching. Again, if you're new to the channel and you wanna see more of this content, make sure to hit that subscribe button. There's a couple other Sword and Shield videos that I'm hoping to make in the future, so if you're into that game, Make sure to check back for those future videos. Otherwise, I will see you all very, very soon on whatever the heck the next video is. So have an awesome day. Bye.